Because future-looking statements are inherently subject to risk and uncertainty, our reminder is that you should make any purchasing decisions or investment decisions based on products that are currently commercially available. Hello and welcome. I'm Stefan Chandler-Garcia, a developer advocate here at Salesforce. Be today, Becky and I are going to show you a sample application that we've built on the Salesforce platform. It shows you how you can build modern customer and employee experiences in an efficient and agile way using Salesforce. Let's jump in. Becky, can you give us a bit more details? Thanks, Stefan. I'm Becky Hyamas, a product manager here with the Salesforce Functions team. And today, we're going to talk about two solutions we built for Pulsar Motors, the newest fictitious car company. As Becky just mentioned, we've developed a customer-facing app on Heroku for this fictitious e-car company, Pulsar Motors. This app allows customers to customize their dream car online, this being the first aspect of a completely touchless car buying experience. So let's see what this app can do. First, a customer can select the range that they would like for their dream car. They can customize the color of the car and then the style of the interior. On the final page, we hit a contact form that allows us to capture the customer's contact details and notify them when their car is in stock. All of this data is published to Salesforce using the new graph capability of the Composite API. It allows all of this information, the car, the configuration, the style, and all of the details to be sent to Salesforce in a single transaction while maintaining those record relationships. This app could have been built from code in any of your favorite languages like Ruby, Python, or even using a framework like React and hosted right here on Heroku, part of the Salesforce platform. In this case, we've lev leveraged Lightning Web Components to build the app. Over in Salesforce, we can see that a new lead has been created. By clicking on that related car configuration, we can see the details of the customer's dream car. And in this configuration record, we can see a list of recommended actions that we can take in the sales process. The first of which is to allocate a vehicle. Here you can see a flow that uses Lightning Web Components to create a rich experience for the dealer that allows them to find an available car nearby the customer and send a notification to let them know that it's available. When we click Send Confirmation, the Lightning Web Component is going to call out to a Salesforce function. This function is going to do all of the heavy lifting for us. It's going to generate a unique QR code that we can use to provide a touchless experience at the dealership. Then it's going to upload that to an image hosting service. And lastly, it will email the customer to let them know that their car is ready. That email will contain the QR code that was just generated and the details of their exact car configuration. Because this process is compute intensive and makes multiple callouts, it's perfectly suited for the power of elastic compute provided by Salesforce functions. In the past, to build something like this, you would have had to separate the services and invocations in each part of the process. When we press send, the function is immediately invoked and the customer receives a personalized email with a picture of their exact car configuration and that QR code so that they can have a safe experience at the dealership. To see how this function works, let's go ahead and pop into VS Code. If you're familiar with JavaScript development, you would know that there's a whole ecosystem of packages that can be used as building blocks in your apps. As this function is written in JavaScript, we can use many of these packages. In fact, the new car notification function used here uses three of them. One for generating the QR code, one for uploading that QR code to an image hosting service, and a third for sending the personalized email. Now, taking a look at the body of the function, you can see that we're passing in the event that triggered the function, the context, and then the logger. The first thing that we have to do, though, is use that context that we're passing in to get our secrets that are used to authenticate the service. Next, we're going to go ahead and grab the payload that was passed into the function from the event. And from there, you can see where most of the work takes place. Firstly, we're going to use that QR code library to generate the QR code. Then we can upload the image, and lastly, we'll send the email. We can then catch any errors or return the URL. Now, when our customer goes to the dealer, they just whip out their email with the QR code on their phone. The dealer scans the code, and that launched the dealer into, this will be familiar, the car configuration with the customer's details all on it. No repetitive and painful providing of your contact information. It's all in Salesforce and is retrieved with a fully touchless experience. 
So now that they have their confirmation email, our customer has come into the dealership and scanned their QR code. This opens up Salesforce, which once again makes a recommendation on the next action to take. The dealer opens up the flow and can begin processing the lease. Once again, using that flow, we can verify the contact details, we can verify the car configuration, and then begin to input the details of the lease. Once the details are correct, we can again use a function to process the data. In this case, we have a lease calculation function that will do the complex math for us. When we press next, the flow will synchronously call the function and then provide the results right in the UI. We can then send the customer the lease agreement and take them one step closer to owning their new car. Here, yet again, we have another compute intensive action with lease calculations. We're using flow to call the Salesforce function to calculate the lease. Now, just like the Lightning Web Components, admins can reuse Salesforce functions to do lease calc for other experiences with low code on Salesforce platform. Over in the Flow Builder, we can see all of the steps that our rep just went through to process the lease. After the input screen, you can see an Apex action called Calculate Lease. This is an invocable method that allows you to execute Apex as part of your flow, but what's unique here is that it's also running a function. You can see that we're taking the inputs from our flow and passing them right into Apex, then returning the values needed from the lease calculation. Over in VS Code, we can see our lease calculator service Apex class that uses an invocable method to expose itself to the flow. Like any other invocable method, it's comprised of a request class that contains the inputs passed in from the flow and a response class that provides the response back to the flow. In the method itself, you can see that we take each request and serialize the payload for use in the function. We can then instantiate the function by running functions.function.get and then provide the name of the function we'd like and then invoke it by calling function.invoke and just passing in the payload. While this app is running the function synchronously, be sure to check out the DreamTX Apex episode to check out how you can call functions asynchronously. In the lease calculator function itself, you can see that we're just taking the payload from the Apex class and passing it right into that lease calculator, then using the package to calculate the lease values and returning them. That's it. In both of those examples, we've been able to demonstrate the power that Salesforce functions can bring to your Salesforce toolkit. Just like the many other great automation capabilities of the platform, they can be used as building blocks all over Salesforce when you need just that little extra bit of compute power. Now let's look at how we created IoT functionality for Pulsar, helping the service department better serve customers' experience of problem with their Pulsar vehicle. So all, person, all, all Pulsar vehicles are internet connected. They're continuously collecting and sending diagnostic data securely to Pulsar. This means when a customer calls the service department and says, my car's making a funny noise, or my battery seems like it's not lasting as long as it should, the service technician has data they can use to investigate the issue, both historical and real-time data. Here in Service Cloud, we can see a case was created when the customer called in reporting the battery issue. So the service technician can click on that case and immediately begin investigating the issue using real data from the car. They don't need to wait for the customer to bring in the car. First, we can look at historical battery health data over the last, let's say, 100 miles that the car was driven. We can see that the estimated discharge rate does not match the car's actual discharge rate corroborating the customer's concern of, my battery seems like it's not lasting as long as it should. Now we know something's not right, but we need to dig in some more to understand if the battery is faulty or if there's some component in the car that is faulty and drawing more power than it should. So with the customer's permission, we can check out real-time data for the car while the car is being driven to better understand what's happening. Okay, now let's take a look at how we build. We're using a few technologies here, a Heroku app, MQTT, a Postgres database, and Apache Kafka. In this example, simulating diagnostic data being sent from Pulsar vehicles, we're doing that using a Heroku app. So the diagnostic data includes information about the vehicles, such as current MPGE, 
charge remaining, and range, rem range remaining. When a diagnostic event comes in from a vehicle, we do two things. First, we save the event to a Postgres table and then send the event to Apache Kafka. This is a common design for real-time data processing pipeline. Looking in our sensor connector JavaScript file, you can see that first we are instantiating Kafka, then when data hits the service, we're saving it to Postgres, and then we're sending that message to Kafka. Saving the, the data in Postgres allows us to do charting and analytics on large volumes of past data using, for example, Einstein analytics. While streaming the data into Apache Kafka decouples the data subsequent use by downstream consumers from the data ingestion, like, for example, providing charts that react in real time to data changes. So this means it's easy for another team or another developer to create downstream services that can use that data. To implement the real time chart in the case record, we have another Heroku app listening to Kafka for new events. And when a new event arrives, the, Her the Heroku app sends it over a WebSocket connection to the chart in the case record. Here in the server file of that app, you can see that we are creating an MQTT broker that is listening for messages from Kafka and then stream them out to subscribers. Other downstream consumers could be performing additional processing on the data stream like filtering, aggregation, or merging with another data source. We've seen some customers sending raw data to AWS 3 or for compliance purposes, they're sending to Glacier or regulatory reasons. Lastly, we have our lining web component in Salesforce. You can see the JavaScript file that we are creating a new WebSocket subscription that is listening to our MQTT server on Heroku. And when a message is received, it will take the message and parse the payload containing the sensor data, and then uses chart.js chart to update the data in real time. This is such a great way of showing how we can bring together all of these services to provide not only real-time analytics, but also storing large data volumes for many years. If you think that's cool, you can also now use the Kafka Streaming Data Connector, currently available for Postgres on Heroku. It provides a centralized Kafka-based event bus that will fire change events propagated from the database giving you the ability to take action on those changes. Now that we've gone through this end-to-end -end customer experience, let's take a step back and look at the technology that we've used. So we started out in our customer car configurator that we've built using Lightning Web Components within Node.js. That's then hosted on Heroku, where the customer was able to configure their dream car by selecting the car color, any of the configuration options that they would like and by inputting their details and then sending that over to the dealership using that composite graph API here you can see in the diagram. We then used Sales Cloud to alert the dealership of that new lead so that they could find an available vehicle and let the customer know that it was available. For that, we used Flow to check and verify those details, find that location, and then call out to a Salesforce function that was used to take a number of those Heroku add-ons and NPM packages and then generate that QR code, upload it, and then send that email specifically to that customer with their details in the email. When the customer arrived in store, we scanned their QR code that opened up that sales cloud window so that we can process the lease agreement, which again used a Salesforce flow to go in and verify those details take the input details for that lease and then pass those into a Salesforce function where we found a lease calculator package available that we could use to process that lease and bring back all of those calculations and figures into Salesforce. Now, once the customer was up and running, they had their dream car, we were able to capture those streaming events from the car into our Postgres database that then used MQTT and Kafka to stream that data into Service Cloud so that the dealership could track those stats coming in from the vehicle and provide top-notch service. Now that you have seen the ways that we can bring together the Salesforce platform, you can be, hopefully you're now inspired to innovate. We've seen a lot of customers during the dev preview and during the pilot doing a lot of things with um, high compute, big calculations that before they had to take them out of the platform. 
And also we have seen a ton of people very excited to use JavaScript and to use all those libraries from um, from some NPA, NPM packages over uh, just very, very simple without having to do all the heavy lifting. Um, if you would like to get early access to Salesforce functions, you can sign up for our pilot by following the link below. And you can also learn more about building apps on Heroku. I highly recommend uh, those following along on Trailhead. Thank you so much for attending today's session and building connected experiences in Salesforce. Conga transforms commercial operations to improve the customer experience and accelerate revenue. Act on customer data to generate branded documents, quotes, and proposals, and reduce contract cycles with approvals and workflows in Salesforce. All parties can access signed documents and audit history with automatic version updates. Check out Conga on App Exchange to learn more. Did you know? that an ally is someone who doesn't identify as an underrepresented group, but seeks to understand the challenges that they face. At Salesforce, we've distilled becoming an ally into four practices. Ask, listen, show up, and speak up. Skilling up on equality makes our community stronger. Learn more on Trailhead and earn your Equality Allies Strategy Badge.